Hello and good morning. This is Stefan from Unibright. I'm in Belgrade. Yesterday we had a meetup here um, at the Zug place together with our partner Tolar. And the Unibright part of the meetup was to showcase the, the demo for the very first time. And I want to repeat the session and record it here so you can all have uh, a better view uh, compared to the, um, to the filming we did yesterday. So this is the Unibright login. Um, it will be opened for uh, the public in a few weeks. We are still working on some last uh, bugs and glitches to make it even feel better. Um, and I will log in and also tell a little bit about the process while I'm using the software itself. The process itself starts with a with a workflow designer where you can choose a template. So the idea of Unibright, uh, just, just to name it shortly again, uh, is to work with different templates um, that stand for different use cases. So in this case, for our live demo, we will be working on a multi-party approval template. And you will be presented uh, a start and an end note, and you have two uh, types of, of uh, elements or nodes that you can work with. One is an approver and one is a feedback. To make it a little uh, bit better to understand, I will draw a process. So think of a multi-party approval as of a checklist. So for example, a company um, wants to uh, confirm on a new product and different people or different de uh, departments have to give their okay before this product is finally uh, put into the webshop. And remember, this is uh, used by somebody who, who knows the process itself, knows what the company is doing, but does not uh, have to know anything about smart contracts or a programming language or whatever. So right now there are many boxes and many circles on the drawboard. I will connect them and then I'll explain what it is all about. <clears throat> so while I'm connecting, it already shows to which elements uh, I can actually connect and clicking on it. I can also use keyboard shortcuts for this. Okay, so um, I do the auto layout function and then I make a little bit more space. So what we have here is we have three different approvers. So these approvers could be persons giving their approval to something. For example, <clears throat> Paul likes design and Maria likes design. I can also put in some description who is the instance, for example, if it's not if it's not a person but a department. I'll come to that later. <clears throat> and John likes design. Okay, so we have three different approvers giving their approval for reaching that state. And that state could be named like Design, design is okay. So what we can do now, we can decide how many approvals we actually need. You see that there are three approvers coming in into that state and we can decide, do we need one of them, two of them or all three? We can adjust it here. Uh, in this case, I will go for two uh, needed approvals. <clears throat> and then when this state is reached, the next party can give their approval. For example, um, quality, okay. This could be the quality control department. And if so, the state quality, okay, is reached. Okay, so for now we, uh, we draw a design. Of course, we can make it as complex as we want, uh, like having more um, feedback steps or more parties that have to approve. But for now, this should be enough. And now I can validate um, this workflow. 
it is validating um, and during validation uh, the backend checks if all the connections are set up properly so in this case that there are no cyclic dependencies so for example uh, that this um, feedback node is not allowed to go back to the start node that every node is connected and there's no lost node on the drawboard and so on so this ensures that we have a proper model of our uh, multi-party approval template that can be finally used for uh, generating code. We have a code preview option here where you can actually see what the, what the system is doing. So in this case, I selected Ethereum, so you will be presented Solidity code. And uh, yeah, now you see all the lines of code that you might have written on your own if you're not using something like Unibrite. <clears throat> and um, of course, in the end, the, the designer of that process is perhaps isn't even uh, interested in the code. But of course, uh, we want to show it um, that we uh, generate this code. Okay, now I uh, created a design and it has nothing to do with any blockchain uh, right now. It's that nothing, it's a, it has nothing uh, to do with a specific address or anything. It's just the pure design. That's what the designer is for. So I can save it. Uh, I call it like workflow design, um, no, video demo. I save it. And now I can switch to the contract lifecycle manager. The contract lifecycle manager is um, the tool where you can take a design, I import it, um, so you recognize this is what I just <coughs> uh, painted. So you take a design and you can make a real smart contract instance out of it that is living in a specific blockchain. So now for the public demo we uh, decided to make some uh, fixed de uh, decisions to make it a little bit easier. So what we want to do with Unibrite, we want to integrate the outside world. For a company, we want to uh, uh, enable the company to interact with a blockchain by using their existing systems. So to, um, uh, to simulate this, uh, for the public demo, we wrote an email connector. So I can now configure this email connectors for every approval. <clears throat> I can enter an email who is allowed to give the approval for Paul. So I could enter Paul's email here, Maria's email here and John's email here as I'm only one person and uh, I'm not Paul, Maria and John at the same time. I always take the same um, email address, always my Unibrite address. And <clears throat> you already see for every um, for every approval, uh, we have a positive approval code and a negative approval code. So when I am sending from this address, I am sending that code to uh, demo at demo.unibrite.io. Um, the system will consider to send a feedback of this uh, approval. Okay, I have another approval here with a different code. And in the end, I will be notified by email that the complete process is ready. So now I inserted many uh, um, adapters from our connector. <clears throat> in the final product, of course, you will not have just an email field here, but you will have something like a drop down uh, where you can select any adapter that you set up in um, the Unibrite connector. <clears throat> it could be an uh, an iDoc from SAP, it could be a web service, it could be um, an SMS handler, it could be reading from a file, no matter what. For the public demo, we decided to um, offer an email adapter because it's the most straight, straightforward thing. All right, I can now save this instance. Um, I call it workflow instance uh, email demo. Yeah, it's saved. Still, nothing in the blockchain happened. What we have to do now is to publish that instance and really bring it to the blockchain. Uh, for, the, for the demo, we decided to take um, Ethereum testnet. Uh, the reason why we did so is that you or whoever is using the demo really can see that something in the blockchain happens. So this is not a mock-up or a fake. <laughs> but on the other hand, we want, did not want to use the, um, yeah, the real Ethereum network or anything. So if I press this button in the later version, I would again be presented which blockchain do you want to use, which code. 
this time it's just like sending a um, Solidity smart contract and it's published. So this is the very first uh, time that we brought a smart contract to the blockchain just by designing it visually. <clears throat> and with our uh, Explorer tool, we can now monitor it. So I'll switch to the to the Explorer. And these are many uh, deployments I did during the last days. So here you can see for the video demo deployment is still in progress. I can already click on it. And I have to wait for the status a little bit. Okay, it's pending. So th that means the uh, instance, the smart contract has been generated and it is, has been published to, uh, to, to the blockchain and now it is waiting for, um, for approvals. So what you see here is a different graphical representation of what we painted before. I can show it up again in a new tab. So this part of the approval was uh, combined in this package. Design is okay, and three approvals. And here we see two are needed, and none of them are uh, have yet approved. And the second package is the quality okay package. This one, yeah. The reason why we uh, went for a different uh, graphical representation mainly is that this part is completely responsive. So it uh, also should work in a future release uh, on a mobile phone or uh, on a tablet. Um, because the person in a company who's watching that process most probably is another person than um, designing the workflow. All right, let's have a look. We have a blockchain address here. And uh, right now we use the RinkB testnet. Um, might be that we change to Robston uh, before the public demo or even switch between them. <clears throat> and I, now I see that address. And <clears throat> what we can see here is that there are two transactions already. That's the contract creation of one minute ago and one transaction who actually told the, um, the smart contract, the Unibrite smart contract, that it's now ready to use. So we send something like a start action. So this is the current state. And this would be the way uh, you have to look at a, at a smart contract uh, today. We can see that we call the function start, but apart from that, all this information would not be useful for any manager of a, of a bigger company. So he should rather use our Explorer. So what we do now, we'll send an approval. I'll check uh, for the code. So uh, to give the uh, approval for Paul, I have to send an email from Stefan at Unibright.io um, giving that code as a subject. So I will just paste it here and send it. There we go. And now we can have a look. Take some time, of course, in the in the blockchain. We also can perhaps uh, check Etherscan. So <coughs> here you see the transaction that I just did, sending the approval from Paul. And there you go. You see already um, that Paul gave his approval. I will give another approval for Maria and I take the code <coughs> and I send the code to Dean at Unibright.io. Again, this, this time it takes perhaps a little time. So what's happening in the background is that our connector is receiving an email and the internal adapter configuration tells him to take that email, take the code, find the corresponding approval of a corresponding smart contract and then um, uh, set a different state in the uh, smart contract. Okay, now we have it. Sometimes the Explorer is even faster than uh, Etherscan showing the transactions. Oh, there it is. So it has been 32 seconds ago, but it shows up now. So what happened now is that this package is now completely approved because we told them that we need two approvals and now two of them gave their okay. So John doesn't necessarily have to give his uh, okay. 
And now you also see that the next package is blue and has this pending state because now uh, this package waits for approval. If the guy approving for that package would have given his OK earlier, it would have been ignored because first of all, this package has to be uh, confirmed and then we can move on to that one. And um, let's have a look. Quality OK. We have these two codes and this time I will send a negative approval. So the quality department will actually tell no, we are not um, happy with the quality of the product, so we do not approve it. Um, and I have to send another email with a negative code this time. There we go. And again, we have a look. The way it is designed right now is that the multi-party approval template understands every negative approval as a complete stop of the process. Um, perhaps it's not 100% uh, realistic. In, uh, in reality, of course, when quality is not okay, there we go, there's the update. Um, we would perhaps rather um, do another check like one week later or so uh, to make it a little bit easier for the, for the live demo. Um, we just decided to call that status not declined, but needs work. So it shows that some, something has to be done. But for now, the overall uh, workflow is completed. Uh, we had two positive approvals and uh, one negative approval. And again, the complete idea about Unibride is that we have the design, the code generation, the publishing, the connecting and the monitoring of a blockchain-based business process without writing or reading one single line of code. Yeah, that's it for now. Um, as I said, we will work a little bit on uh, some nasty bugs that we would like to uh, yeah, would like to get rid of before we open the demo for the public. So yeah, stay connected on our uh, website unibrad.io and read the corresponding medium blog. And um, we will tell you very soon uh, when the public demo is available. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.